down for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you guys. You knew I was going to get there. I'm a big boy here. I might cry a little bit. But we're going to the Bible of God with that. But I'm going to tell you something. I came, I've been coming to these family unions. And I do like Susan said. I kind of shove Uncle Bort to the side. Or Roger or Uncle Burton. Sometimes we think that we're bigger and stronger than we are. And I say, Uncle Willard, I don't want to hear it today. And Uncle Willard never gave up. No. My wife never gave up. She okay. prayed for me for 20 years. Thank God. But I tell you, I made a commitment back in 1968, people. And when I made that commitment, I didn't live up to it. Uncle Willard talked about two roads that they speak about in Matthew. The, road, the narrow road and the wide road. Yeah. Well, I was on that wide road. Oh. And it wasn't good. But one day, we kept talking. My wife kept praying. In the meantime, I lost a brother, I lost my father, yeah. which many of you in here have, but yeah. thank God we know where they're at. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, yes sir. And I said, I was out of church, people, for 20 years. I'm not proud of that. I had God, but I didn't have God. I was the religious person, as Roger was speaking about. I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't the person serving God. I hear you, brother. So I was out of church, and after Daddy died, one of the last things he said to me on the bed, he said, son, I know where you're at. Don't be bashful. Don't be shy. Let the people know that you want to serve God. Oh, yes. And I still, for years, when I say years, maybe another four years or so, I kept it aside. Well, I'm telling you, just like Roger tell you, you can be somebody in that vehicle, be somebody in your bedroom, be whatever. I laid on my bed Saturday night, 3 o'clock in the morning, as plain as I see each one of you in this room, Daddy was dead and gone, but Daddy stood to Father, yeah. put him out of bed. Yeah. And I don't know if it was an angel, don't know what Glory. it was, I'm not going to butter it up. But I'm telling yes. you, Daddy said to me, son, what are you waiting for? At 3 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, it's Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I got up out of my bed, my wife went on, got ready to go to church. Nobody knew what, what happened to me that night. Nobody knew nothing. I got up. I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to wear because I've been out of your house for a while. But as moms, we always can find something. I got up, got myself showered. When I walked in that church, you would have thought the whole world was coming down. People walk up to you, well, you know, this church isn't going to do this with you and I in here. I said, well, this church has got a strong foundation and it's going to hold up forever. But I'm telling you, the Lord is going to speak to you. If you shove it under the carpet as soon as He speaks, it's not going to work. The Lord wants you to be proud of serving Him. Yes. And I'm telling you to this day, the burdens that I may have had are now gone. Yeah. The Bible plainly speaks about worrying. People, if you're worrying, it's a sin. It's a plain sin. Give it to God. Let God take care of it. And I listened to Uncle Willard and Roger, and, and we, we speak of this thing of love. And I, and I just came here, and I can tell you, each one of you all have had a bearing within my heart by coming to the reunions, seeing how you were serving God, watching how you were serving God. And I said, you know, I'm missing something. But now I'm not missing that. But I also know how to love, and I know how to forgive. People... Susie couldn't have said it no better. And I was so proud when I sat on Aunt Mary's porch and Susie told me about her commitment to God. You know, it's a blessing when you can come that distance and travel just to see the family. But to hear a commitment that Susie just told you all and hear God speaking. Mm -hmm. yes, but let me tell you, she also said something that's very important. And I know that I love each and every one of my family here. I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I know that God loves me. But I also know that I had problems, a serious problem in my life, that I had to forgive. People, it was the hardest thing to do, but I gave it to God and said, Lord, it's tough, but I know you're going to see me through it. Yeah, and if you're here today and you have anything against a brother or sister or anybody outside yeah. that world, it don't have to be a Christian, it don't be, have to be a family member. Right. If you don't have the love in your heart to forgive, then you better be searching yourself. Right. And you take that mirror someday that you're looking into and you ask that mirror, is this person going to go to see God or not?
If you can't forgive, like you can't yeah. 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 yeah, that's right too, man. If you can't do it, I feel sorry for you. But I can tell you one thing. If you take time to pray about it, you take time to give God doesn't he works in it. Doesn't mean he's gonna work a, a miracle in, in a day or two. I just told you it took twenty years. But my wife never gave up on praying. And she said, The Lord softened his heart. Well sometimes he softened my heart so much, I don't know how I'm standing up here right now with that ball. But I'm telling you, it was it was a feeling. It's a, it's a pleasure to be able to ride up and down the road from home to Tennessee or from home to Florida, wherever we may go. Yeah. And we have something we can talk about. We can yeah. talk about the Lord. We can talk about the Bible. And I'm telling you, it's a blessing to know God. Yeah. But it's only going to work. Susie, I, I just praise you for being able to do and say what you say. If we can't forgive and we can't love, then we need to do something. Yeah. And if I, and I would say to anyone who's here, if I have done anything to anybody in my family, that I would tell you right now, I would pray and ask you for forgiveness, yeah. whether it be physical or verbal, whatever I may have done to any of you. I don't know. I don't, maybe we don't know sometimes when we hurt somebody's feelings. We don't know how we may have hurt this person or that person. But we need to know how to forgive. And, and it's just been a pleasure for the years that I've been coming here uh, with Uncle Burton and, and Roger and Uncle Willard preaching. I just, and I thank God that I'm where I'm at now, but I just wish that I would have listened years yeah. ago because I missed a lot of benefits that the That's fruits right. of the Spirit that the Lord has for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I, yeah. I, I tell you, Uncle Willard and them came to Savage and they came into the Baptist church and he told me, he said, now Linda told me, remember, I'm in the Baptist church, I can't jump up and run around. <laughs> <laughs> See, I remember that. <laughs> But I, I, at that time, I was I was not strong. I mean, whenever whenever I feel weak or I have a, a, an emotional situation, yeah. I know that somewhere along the line I've been slipping away from God. But as long as I can stay strong emotionally, I know that God is there with me. Yes. And I know that Sunday morning that I, I was emotional because here's all my aunts, my uncle sitting there, and I wanted to thank Uncle Willard, the man who constantly never gave up giving the word of God. Uncle Burton who never gave up the word of God and yeah. Roger. Yeah. They never gave up on it. That's they right. said, son, you're going to go there, but you need to you need to walk that line. Uh, and when you said about the narrow path, when I read Matthew and he told me about that narrow path, that path, that wide path of destruction, Lord, we just narrowed it down. Oh, and I thank God every day, Uncle Warren, that you did it for me. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we Jesus. Oh, thank God. I'm going well, to... I've got something to say. Hallelujah. <laughs>